Hello and welcome to Enshrouded. So, what I want to do today is kind of go over uh, the build that we're going to be using, or that we've been using in the Hollow Halls for our magic build. And I want to share that with you and kind of explain why we're doing what we're doing. So, I just reset our points so we can talk our way through it. So, absolute first thing we want to do is go up here and pick up our double jump. That is an absolute must. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up through the wizard tree and we're going to grab the majority of this. So, intelligence is a must. Uh, this is the way, just flat out gives you 10% increased damage. So that's a must. Quick recharge is a must, otherwise the staff is too slow. And since we're so close, we're going to go ahead and grab updraft now. So that's taken care of too. And then we're going to continue working our way up the wizard tree. We're going to grab all of the elemental damage. Damage is just good. Uh, this build is more based on a general glass cannon type setup, but not completely. It's better than just glass cannon, but uh, we want to pri prioritize damage. The quicker an enemy dies, the less they can hit you is kind of the idea. So, more intelligence there. Then we're going to get wizard because critical hit chance is increased by 10%. Then we're going to grab chain hit. So, whenever we crit, other enemies around that mob will take... Uh, take sh damage as well. Uh, with shock damage, it's five shock for every point of intelligence. So we'll grab that. Then we'll grab mass destruction, which change changes that to seven per point of intelligence. And uh, finally, straight up intelligence all the way at the end of that tree. Then from there, we're going to come here, get this intelligence point. We're going to grab healer, uh, extra 10% health. It's pretty decent. We'll grab that. Then we're going to get blink and emergency blink. Uh, this way, if you get overwhelmed by a group of mobs in the halls and they stun you, you can still get out of harm's way. Then we're going to come over into uh, our battle mage tree. We'll grab arcane deflection, intelligence, and we'll get the wand node unity. So, 24% of the time, you recover 2% of your mana. Wand Master, 30% chance to spawn an additional wand projectile. So, 30% of the time, you're dealing double damage. And we'll get Sting, because every time you hit an enemy with the wand, its damage goes up by 20%. Now, the next couple nodes are kind of throwaway nodes, but we got to take them to get where we're going. So we pick up Evasion Attack and Battle Hill. Neither one of those two do anything for us, but the remaining points do. So Spirit is extra mana. Then we want to get Bloodletting. So what this does is whenever you score a critical hit, 
uh, there's 50% chance that you'll drop a bunch of recovery orbs. And uh, the orbs give us 10% extra recovery. So we'll get bloodletting. We're going to get life burst. So anytime you kill an enemy, you get three times your intelligence back as health. And then we want to get blood magic. So with blood magic, if you run out of mana, it'll use your life instead, which this gives you the opportunity to continue casting when you wouldn't be able to otherwise. So we'll grab that. And then we're going to go over to the trickster tree. We're going to grab intelligence. We're going to get be gone. Now, be gone might seem like a throwaway, but it's actually not. This really comes in handy if your wand breaks in battle when you're surrounded. It will automatically switch to an unarmed attack, which that attack will push mobs back and stun them. So it helps give you a chance to escape so that you can switch your wand when you're out of harm's way. And we want to grab more intelligence. We're going to grab tear. Once again, this is based on crit, but when you crit an enemy, it gets stunned for four seconds. Uh, that really helps give you a chance to either get out of the way or uh, to be able to s send a second attack if you need to. And then Arcane Concentration, uh, we get one spirit for every two levels of the flame. So our flame is at max level, so that gives us quite a bit of spirit. Okay, and then we got 14 points left. Now, there's a couple different places we can go from here. Uh, for, because of the number of enemies, I've been using Water Aura inside of the halls, but you can also use Radiant Aura and Sun Aura if you're doing lots of fighting with uh, Shroud Monsters. So that one's kind of open, but mainly for the halls. We'll get the, uh, the Water of Life nodes. That's also going to give us another Intelligence. Water Aura. And then Waters of Life. Okay, and then from here, we want to go ahead and, if possible, we can pick up... Uh, some extra intelligence nodes, but I don't think oh, we got one here. Uh, frost can be useful as well, but I think what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and grab this spirit. We'll grab this intelligence point. So we're already up to 14 int. Uh, let's see. Got three points. Don't need that. Don't need those. Uh, We'll go ahead and grab Frost, so if you get hit with melee damage, it slows the enemy. So, there we go. That's our build that we have been running with. Uh, before, I never bothered with any of this stuff. And I had Radiant, Sun Aura, and... Uh, 
think we filled in a couple spare points with the extra points, but I have found that in the hulls, the little bit extra healing helps. Uh, sometimes you trip over the green slime and things like that. It just really kind of helps out. Okay, so that's the build. Now let's go over our foods. So what I've been using is fruit bowl for health regen and stamina recharge, uh, especially with a lot of the flying you do uh, and also that green slime. The stamina recharge is pretty good and the five Five health regen is really good for when you end up using your uh, your blood magic. It helps recover that extremely quickly. We use glow soup because it's five extra intelligence. And when we're in the halls, we use the ectoplasm soup. It does subtract 50 from your health but you get 10% more damage and 8% life leech, so that seems to help. Uh, we also use Flask of the Fail. Uh, I do have meat on hand just in case. Uh, if I had to, I'd use that over the ectoplasm soup just for the extra life. this back where it goes, that's fine. And generally, uh, depending on what I have on the hand, I'll use smaller health potions, uh, mainly because we've only got five constitution. So that's uh, 590 health points. So uh, our health is on the low side. Uh, magic damage, we got plus 80% magic damage. Our critical damage is plus 62% whenever we crit. Uh, magical crit chance 25, so basically one in four shots is a crit, which gives us all the crit uh, multipliers that we picked up. Okay, so let me show you how the staff here with uh, the blood magic works. So you'll see there, once we hit three casts, we're out of mana, but we can continue casting. Now this is also without any food active we're still healing up pretty quick. If we go ahead and activate our fruit bowl, our soup, and we'll go ahead and let our mana charge all the way. Almost there. So let's see how quick we can get through this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so we can, we can get well over ten shots off without having any issues because of, uh, the region that we're getting. Also, let's go back in, look at our character. Go ahead and look at our attributes. 
So with her soup on, we got 19 uh, intelligence. So we are actually gaining uh, extra 105% damage because of that. And our critical damage gets this another 62% on top of that. So it does pretty good. Uh, let's go over what we're carrying. So right now I'm using the Sinister Crescent Wand, our staff. So it gives us 22 ice damage on top of whatever we're doing. Plus it gives us uh, sacred damage and mana leech. Then in our rings, we're using our ring of stamina and ring of rapacity. For our helm, we're using the elder hat because it's 15 magical crit chance and 12% uh, crit damage. We're using the Radium Paladin chest for the big physical res and 240 health, 24 stamina. We're using the Elder Gloves for additional magic damage. And then I'm using Gloom Monarch Boots for mana regen and stamina regen. And then we're using the Monarch Trousers for extra 18 to stamina and 2 to health regen. So that's the items we're using. Then on wands, I'm using the snake spine wand, when in the hollows, uh, all the blunt that it does, plus it gives us one mana regen, 13% overcharge, 16 ice damage, and 20% more damage against the hollow. And we also use the Ritual Tempest Wand. Uh, it's got lots of shock damage and shock damage. Oh, hold on. Now these are the orbs I was talking about. Health, we get health, stamina, mana from anything that we crit. Uh, so let's go back to our character screen, or sorry, our backpack. So we use the Ritual Tempest Wand for all the shock damage. Shock damage has a higher chance to crit. And once again, we want crits. Uh, we carry this for our fire wand. If we're dealing with anything that's immune to shock, we can switch to fire. Uh, the staff, so the staff is 22 ice damage plus extra 20% against the hollow. Now our standard loadout is the first two columns. Everything else is kind of extra stuff that we still got in our inventory. We've got the Crafted Eternal Ice Bolt, Crafted Eternal Fireball, Crafted Acid Bite Eternal. Uh, the Acid Bite doesn't seem to work well against the Hollow Monsters. So keep that in mind, but this works really good against scavengers and uh, other creatures. It, so it, it's still a good one to keep handy. We've got Eternal Hill Channel. We can use this for a quick hill so we don't have to use any health potions, which reminds me that goes there and this goes here. And then this goes here. Uh, I played with Light Burst. It's 
doesn't do enough damage to really be useful, but it can push enemies out of the way if you're getting too, too overempowered, but honestly, you're better off just doing a fireball instead of that. Uh, we have Wisp of Light. I uh, need to craft up some more lock picks. Uh, the elixir, the 30% damage multiplier is huge. Uh, so if you're not messing around in the shroud, it's definitely worth using. And also prayer of the flame scroll. I use that for even more damage as well. Uh, really don't use this, haven't had it uh, too much of a issue with the cold damage. It kind of slows you down for a few seconds, but uh, with, uh, with blink you can still get out of the way of stuff. Uh, we've got a clean bandage just in case we need an extra bit of healing. So that's kind of our general loadout that we run with. Uh, not a fan of the Shroud Meteor Shower. Uh, it just doesn't seem to do much. The Bone Channel is kind of interesting. But unfortunately there is no... Uh, eternal version of that, but you just shoot this thing off and those things will target enemies if there's enemies in range. So that's the build. Let's go over the new thing that we built. Let's come over and look up. So that up there is the Iron Chandelier. The thing is massive. Let's go ahead and run up and we'll take a look at it. So, to give you an idea of how big this thing is, this is two walls high. So, there's one, two. So, that's two walls high. And we've also got two walls in here. So one, two, so it is four walls high to this flooring. And if we look, that chandelier is right there. So you would need at least five walls high worth of clearance to hang this thing. It looks extremely cool. It's nice and big. And that's why we stuck it up here. Let's have a look what that looks like from a little bit of ways. Let's go ahead and aim for here. Look at how huge that lantern is and how much light it gives off. It is extremely cool. But we did have to build a crane to put it on. Those trees, they get me all the time. I'll be flying through and forget how dense they are, the fact they block you. Uh, let's see, we're over here where we flew from. Oh. 
let's head back and run up so we can dive down on it. Completely forgot about those trees. They've got me a couple times. The price of having shade when you're in the desert. Somewhere along the line, I probably need to put a grappling system in to get up all the way up to the top instead of having to run the stairs all the time. Okay, we should be... over here on this. Grab our stuff. This way. Uh, I think I showed everyone already the throne. We'll take a look at it again real quick. Oh, and we did put in some more, a uh, couple more decorations for Mr. Crawley as well. Here's our throne. Go ahead and sit. And then we'll come up again real quick and take a look at Mr. Crawley's area. So this is the iron brazier. That's the skull chandelier. We made a couple of the tables, a chair, Gonna make up some more of this stuff and get it around here as well. Uh, you do need quite a bit of resin for some of the new recipes. So we had a, uh, I planted 10 trees and had uh, enough resin to craft the lantern and still have 46 left. So planting the rebel wood uh, red trees does give you a lot of resin. So yeah, it's 50 resin for the large chandelier. Uh, 20 resin for the Iron Crypt Brazier and six resin for that. So I farmed enough resin out of, uh, I think it was 15 of the trees to make all three of those items. So that's the rundown of the build that I've been using and showing you some of the new craftables. So have a good day, everyone. Talk to you later. Thank you.